Good morning and welcome to EAL's latest webinar on the new suite of engineering VRQs. Now the first slide here really is signposting really to the EAL roadshows. I'm not going to be able to cover in depth the information in the VRQs this morning. So I'd just like to highlight really that we do have seven roadshows across the country. The details are live in the news section on the website and I've given the link there to the roadshows themselves. It is on a first come first serve basis so do book in early and we shall be going over these engineering VRQs the new plumbing qualifications and the new electrotechnical qualifications in a lot more detail. So just to provide you here with an overview of what we should be looking at this morning, we're going to have a look at what new engineering VRQ qualifications are EAL developing, what do the materials look like and how are the qualifications graded. So in response to customer center and provider feedback, we have looked at improving our current suite of engineering VRQs. Within the level one suite, we now have live from March the 1st, the EAL level one award in engineering technologies, the certificate and a diploma size. Within the rule of combination, we have one monetary health and safety unit. This is now an online multi-choice examination. And we also have 22 optional units. This includes four new welding units within that rule of combination. I shall be looking at the differences in our materials a little bit later on in the presentation. So within the level two VRQs then, we've developed a new certificate in engineering technologies, which has eight pathways and also a diploma in engineering technologies also containing eight pathways. Now these will be included within the IOP frameworks England and Wales in pathways one and two. They'll also be included within the Intermediate Level Apprenticeship in Engineering Manufacture in England and Wales within all seven pathways. Now, within these eight pathways, within these qualifications, we have pathways such as Mechanical Engineering, Maintenance Engineering, Motor Vehicle Maintenance, Fab and Weld, Pipework Systems, Electrical and Electronics, electrical and electronic security and we've also kept the engineering technology pathway which is really the rule of combination where you can choose your own units within there. As you can see on this slide we have a number of unit, new units. We've kept the three mandatory units which, are, which still will be online multi-choice examination but we do have a number of new units. 10A there is a sheet metalwork technology unit which we've developed with World Skills uh, and it maps to the national um, finals. We also have a, we've split the 18 and 19, so turning is now a unit in its own right and so is milling. We've also split the CNC turning and milling out too. Also within the level two, we've got a new unit there, 25A, which is the building services engineering pipework fabrication process and techniques. And another 126A, which is building services engineering systems and their layout requirements. We've increased our maths content within it, and we've got a new unit called applied mathematics in engineering and we've also included a unit on business improvement techniques. So within the level three then 
we have four new offerings here. We have a level three certificate size, which contains five pathways. We have a subsidiary diploma size, which has seven pathways. A diploma size qualification, which again has seven pathways and a larger qualification, the extended diploma in engineering technologies, which has one pathway. Again, all these qualifications will be included in the advanced level apprenticeship in engineering manufacture, England and Wales, within pathways 1 to 14. They do include specific pathways such as aerospace, mechanical engineering, maintenance engineering, fab and weld, electrical and electronics, engineering technical support and once again we've left the engineering technology pathway in there where you can choose units according to local need. These qualifications are also included on the Engineering Council's database of approved qualifications. Uh, learners on completion of this qualification can apply for Eng tech status. Just a little bit of detail then behind the level 3 certificate here. A lot of information here but the main point really is that it has one monetary core unit, one monetary pathway unit and one optional unit except for the engineering technology pathway which has one monetary core unit and two optional units. 28-29 credits and 225 guided learning hours. Within the subsidiary diploma uh, the qualification has one monetary, the same one monetary core unit. It has one monetary pathway unit from Group A and three optional units from Group B. Sized 48, 49 credits and has three, seven, five guided learning hours. The diploma has the same one monetary core unit. It has one optional unit from Group A but has five optional units from Group B. 68, 69 credits and 529 guided learning hours. And finally, the extended diploma in engineering technologies has one monetary core unit, the same core unit there, one optional unit from Group A, and they choose then eight optional units from Group B from a number of units which they can choose. Larger size qualification there, 98, 99 credits, 750 guided learning hours. One thing that we have greatly improved is what our materials look like. I've given you the sample really of the new qualification manuals, front cover there as you can see for the level one, level one suite, and the specifications. The specifications themselves will give you all the high level detail about the qualification, but it also will include how it's assessed and the rule of combination too. As I've said, during these roadshows, we shall be unpicking this a lot more, looking at the materials, looking at how we've made them interactive, how they will now fit upon on tablets, for instance, uh, how that they are a lot more learner friendly and also tutor friendly too. So within the delivery packs, as you can see there, they have an EAL brand there, they shall be, the delivery pack will have the same front cover there. It will tell you what the unit is, the code, the GLH and credits. And as you can see there on the contents page, what we've done now is we've clearly split up then what the, what the delivery advice in the delivery unit, any knowledge assessment now, and we'll state whether that's controlled or not. If it's controlled, we're taking it out of these packs and they will be in a separate pack material password protected. Um, the practical assessments will all be within these packs too. You shall be able to get uh, publications of these too, which is new within the engineering VRQs, but more on that at the roadshows themselves. And section six in this instance is the grading criteria how the unit is graded. Again, we've created now a learner assessment pack. Again, that will contain all of the assessments and all of the information needed for the learner to complete that unit. As I said in the previous slide there, 
the within this particular knowledge assessment, it is a, or both of them, three of them, they, they are controlled assessments. So the in this pack, we shall signpost to the separate controlled assessment, which will be a password protected document. So how then are the qualifications graded? So bottom line is that learners must achieve a pass in all components for the qualification to be awarded. That goes without saying, really. And then the final grade for the qualification will be determined from the grades achieved by the learners in the external examination, the online exams within the mandatory units, and the centre marked assessments within the optional units. So the overall grade for the qualification is determined as followed. So the grade for each unit should be converted to a mark. I've given you an example on this next slide here from the Level 1 Certificate in Engineering Technologies. Again, this particular certificate has four units. So the, the pass mark range would be between four and five. The merit mark range would be between 6 and 9, and the distinction mark range would be between 10 and 12. Again, at the roadshows, we shall be going into the grading criteria in much more detail. So, centres would then use one of the templates provided within the qualification manual, and this will be an interactive template to determine the grade. As you can see here, what the, the monetary core unit is named, Introduction to Working in Engineering. And then you would just input then the three units, what the learner has chosen, with the appropriate mark. The marks would then be converted to a grade. The grade for that unit would be given, and that particular unit and, and qualification could be signed off at the bottom there. Okay, so I know I've gone through a lot of information there quite quickly. I can open up now just for five minutes or so, really, on any questions. I'm sure there's lots of questions to ask. We will answer as many questions as possible during the roadshows as well, so that'll be your opportunity there for me to go into more depth about the particular content of this PowerPoint. Thank you for listening this morning. We do have some questions coming in here. Uh, they, I shall try and answer them when they do come through to me. If I can't give you a clear answer today, we shall provide the answers for you uh, during the road shows uh, as well. Uh, Alan's asked, are all levels available from the 1st of March? It's a good question, Alan, but level one is now live. The award certificate and diploma, that can be added to a center's remit. The level two and three will go live in August. So we're expecting those to go live then. So David Pye has asked, will this be ready for September 2015? Yes, it will, David, yes. Uh, will there be, Mark Andrews asks, will there be SFA 19 plus funding and for which sizes of qualifications? Um, with all these qualifications we have developed do, uh, do equate to the appropriate size for SFA funding. We will obviously have to go through that channel and request that funding. Um, that's not guaranteed at the moment, but that's what we're hoping all qualifications will be eligible for 19 plus funding. The cost of registrations, yes, we do have a cost for all registrations. Um, it's, it's a little bit too much information to give out across the award certificates and diplomas across all qualifications at the moment, Alan, but we shall give you that information during the road shows and it will be available to you uh, via our website. Uh, David Pye said, will there be mock online exams available? Yes, 
There will be, David, yes. We've built upon our existing online exams wherever possible, so we've got mock exams already for those, particularly within the level two and level three qualifications we've built upon you know, existing proven exams. We've not changed anything there. Within the level one, we will have mock exams ready as well. So Mike's asked, in what ways are these new VRQs virtual learning environment friendly? Mike, we, they are interactive PDFs now, which will sit nicely upon tablets now. Learners can input through that way on a computer. Before, learners were having to write, for instance, reports and write into print off and write. That's not the case now with most of our materials. They can input through it through, through an e-method now. Uh, will the level 3 qualifications attract UCAS points? We're in the process of applying for that. Again, there's no guarantees for that, but EAL are in the process of applying for that. Neil said, will the level 3s run alongside existing level 3 VRQs as an option or they're replacing? Neil, we've kept our main level 3s, for instance, the level 3 Eng Tech in there as well. We are running them side by side. The only level three the diploma will replace is the progressive diploma within the level three frameworks. But within these pathways, within these qualifications, we've picked up the ones that will, they will replace anyway. But our main ones are level two diploma and tech, level three diploma and tech, we're winning side by side. Uh, David says, uh, has the assessment within the units changed on the level three qualifications? David, wherever possible, we've kept the same assessments. What we have done, we've, we've in, vastly improved them. I'll give you an example. In unit, two, unit nine of level two, platework operations, the, the, assess, the practical assessment was quite substantial. Center was saying it's costing too much. It took the lens too far to do. We've given you now specifications, and we've said you can develop your own, or you can use the one we're giving you in some instances. So we have improved them. Colin said, will the IQs, will, will, will the certificates be included? When, yes, that's a new thing for us, Colin. The certificates as well will be included with the in advance apprenticeship frameworks too. We've improved our offering now in that. Jim's asked, when is the next road show and where, Jim? It's on this first slide and we shall give you the, the slide presentation uh, at the end of the webinar. Yeah, Mark, Mark said you mentioned e-learning content in the, in the blurb. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. How will these calls help us meet the FELTAG agenda? Mark, we, we, we are aware of the FELTAG agenda and we, we are aware of the importance of e-learning and interaction. This was the, one of the main drivers behind our improvement to these units and certainly they will meet the FELTAG agenda. Um, Alan says, can we still request reasonable adjustment for tasks that do meet local needs? Alan, we, we try to address that need, but the answer to that is yes. We shall be putting a recording uh, on this. Uh, shortly, so you will be able to watch this through. I just got to not get an audio, so certainly you shall be able to see the recording for this. Still got some people typing now. We'll be able to take two or three more minutes more, and we shall close on that. Is Jim's asked his PA going then? No, it's not Jim. Uh, that's remaining. That that won't be. That's not been changed at all. Dave, it's a great question, Nat, and it's certainly within EL's remit. We are looking into that at the moment. These materials we have developed, David, they they certainly will support an e-portfolio.
Just one more minute now and I shall be closing. Jan's asked, where can I access these slides? Jan, we shall send you the copy of the slides uh, sometime later today. Jeff says, is the, is the business improvement level two and level three have online tests? No, the, the, the business improvement hasn't changed, Jeff. It's just these VRQs which sit within pathway one and two outside of the, the business improvement techniques. Without a doubt, we shall send these slides to all participants today. Just take one more question, please. Yes, thank you, Lord. We, we shall send the slides out. Well, thank you for this morning and all the questions. Do attend our road shows and certainly we shall be able to answer more questions for you and look into it into a lot more depth. Have a great day.